All right, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sally Zaleski. I am the Executive Office Manager with South Carolina Citizens for Life, and I'd like to welcome you to today's Proudly Pro-Life webcast with Jeannie and Carter Smith. They are the co-founders of Coastline Women's Center. Jeannie is a, an author of a couple of books and a devotional or two, and uh, she'll talk to us more about that today. And Jeannie and Carter are gonna be uh, talking today about their journey of redemption, restoration, and salvation. And Holly Gatling, our executive director, is gonna be kicking off this interview today. If you have any questions for Jeannie and Carter, please feel free to email those to info at sclife.org. Again, that uh, email address is info at sclife.org. Without further ado, welcome Jeannie and Carter, Holly. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, good afternoon. I'm so happy to welcome you to our webcast and I don't know what um, week we're on. I mean, this is something new that we started with as, as a way to expand our message. And we've just been so blessed to have so many interesting people and um, to share this on Facebook. I do want to say that I was at the Piedmont Women's Center banquet when Jeannie and Carter first shared their their testimony, and it was amazing. Um, I bought Jeannie's first book, Shattered into Beautiful, and it's one of the most amazing and inspiring books that I have ever read. And I've read a lot of books, y'all. <laughs> you can see my bookshelf behind me. Just That's just some of my books. So without further ado, oh, and, and – Jeannie, I'd like you to tell people where they can get a copy of, the, of Shattered into Beautiful and your other books. Um, so it, without further ado, if you all would just share your story with us. Well, you, you can get copies of um, my books on Amazon. They're available on Amazon and Christian distributors and also on JeannieScottSmith.com. They'll be available there. Um, but yeah, so we, we um, Holly, you've been a part of our journey from the very, very beginning. So the first time that we ever shared our story publicly was at that banquet. And that was back in, I believe it was 2008. Wow, 2008. It's been that long. Been that long. Yeah. Um, Lots happened since then. <laughs> a lot has happened. But our story is really a story of just um, redemption and healing. Uh, we both received Christ um, and entered into salvation before we were married. But during our engagement, Carter learned of my abortion and that I had had um, back in 1993. And he had never had an abortion. And so he had never dealt with the impact of abortion or understood, you know, what that could do to a woman or to a marriage. And so um, he was very loving and compassionate through it all. But uh, it wasn't until we actually were married and we started to have a child of our own that the abortion rose to a ugly surface in, in, in my life and in our marriage. And, you know, the thing is, is that uh, as a Christian, I, I knew that God had forgiven me. But what I didn't know then that I know now is that I just had not walked through healing. And that is a necessary step uh, to walk through. And so, you know, each each week or each month, rather, uh, we would attempt to get pregnant because I wanted a child so desperately and um, I couldn't get pregnant. And so uh, it caused the abortion to surface in an ugly way. And um, I love to share this part, you know, because it's so important to understand that one in every four women have had an abortion. Um, and so when we think about that in large groups, especially um, the sizes of our churches, that's we need to understand that there are women in those churches that are hurting because I was one of those women. And so every Sunday I would go to church, I would serve in women's ministry, but no one ever knew my pain because I never talked about it. And so it's so important that, it, that that's spoken about um, within the church body. But every night, every, every you know, I, I would cry. There was a lot of nights, right, that I would just lay and cry. Yeah, and before we get too far into this, I wanted to say, you know, when she said that, Early on, she told me about the abortion and, and what, where I was and, and where a lot of people are in our communities or in, and in our country, actually, um, they don't realize the effect yeah. of the abortion. Whenever she told me, it was like, oh, no problem. It's, it's okay. But 
what what we found as we go through the story is is that it's it it's profound. It's actually you will see through our story that it affected our our marriage and it affected our family and affected Jeannie in ways that um, was a lot more than we realize sometimes because education is key to us understanding the importance of the effects of abortion on um, everyone's life. Yeah. And Carter, and you are, you were, and you are a nurse. Yes. You got this medical background, which makes this even more interesting. Yes. And so even, even at that point, I mean, even when she first told me I was, I was nursing then and, and the effects and the complications that an abortion brings to a person that was the farthest thing from my mind at that point. So, and, and I didn't realize the effects that it, it, it had on Jeannie emotionally and mentally. Yeah. So each, each month that pain seemed to grow and, and um, devastate our lives in, in a greater way. And um, we were living in North Carolina at the time, but we Carter got a job um, in Greenville, South Carolina. And so it, it caused us to, to move our family there. And um, we didn't know anyone in Greenville. So we moved there. And so the depression for me got worse and worse. And I remember uh, going to see a doctor because I didn't, I physically thought something was wrong with me. And um, they were concerned about me having suicidal thoughts, which at the time I didn't want to admit it, but I, I, I was having some of those things, uh, those thoughts, those dark thoughts going on. And I never knew it, you know, then as I was walking through it, that it was the result of my abortion. You know, I just thought I was just a messed up little <laughs> individual, but um, it, it, it in fact was. And so, Carter began to pray. I remember you saying that you never knew what what type of genie you were going to come home to, yeah. because I had developed a pattern of um, a way that I would cope with my pain. I would isolate myself. I would go into a closet and I would just pray because I couldn't deal with the emotions that I was having that was resurfacing from the desire to want to have a child and not being able to get pregnant. Um, and then I was diagnosed with unknown infertility mm -hmm. and then dealing with the pain of my abortion. So it was just so much going on at one time. And, and, you were an instant mom. and I was an instant mom because when we got married, Carter had two children from a yeah. previous marriage that became my children. There was a lot going on, a lot of dynamics. A lot of dynamics. And, um, and they became mine. It was as if I had birthed them my, myself. So I truly understand the gift of adoption. And, and so there was a lot of dynamics going on. Um, but the, the, the thing that was causing the pain was the abortion. And so the root cause. The root cause. And, and I remember that, you know, Carter, you might want to share this versus me okay. because this was very profound. It was when you were rocking me and I said that I felt like I had been cursed. Yeah. So when we came... This is this is when I how I, when I realized that how profound the uh, the abortion uh, was on Jeannie's life is when I came home one day from work and she was so upset and she was so uh, depressed and she just fell into my arms I mean fell around my neck with her arms and said um, I'm cursed by God because I had this abortion that's why I can't have a baby mm -hmm. and I realized then how how mm -hmm. what an impact the abortion had on her life mm -hmm. and 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 really not knowing how to, to handle that mm -hmm. and so the only thing you can do when you don't know how to handle a situation is you take it to prayer mm -hmm. and i took that to, to jesus and i prayed uh, that he would give us wisdom and guidance mm -hmm. on how to handle that mm -hmm. situation and so at that point i realized how big and how massive the abortion was on Jeannie's life mm -hmm. and, and even on our marriage and, you know, our lives together. So yeah. it was destroying me and it was destroying our marriage. And you begin to pray that God would bring help for your wife. Mm -hmm. And he did that. And he did that through a pregnancy crisis center. Yes. So um, it was, it was a life changer, life, uh, life saver, life saver um, for us. But we, um, went to church one Sunday morning and there was a brochure that was put in our hands that said there was a, it was a church in Greenville and it said that there was a local pregnancy crisis center that was looking for volunteers and we didn't know what a pregnancy crisis center was but we looked at
them up and discovered who they were and what they did. And so that was Piedmont Women's Center. Mm -hmm. And um, and so Carter said, why don't you reach out to them and see if they can help you with the pain um, of your uh, abortion. And so, you know, thinking back to what you just said about feeling, you know, I, I felt like I was as a post abortive woman, I felt like when when I said that I felt like I was cursed, I felt like I was enduring the punishment in which I deserved for having that abortion. And that is what so many post abortive, uh, abortive women feel is that, you know, this is their punishment, uh, whatever they're going through their circumstances, their pain, it's their punishment. But what we don't understand, and even as a Christian, I didn't understand is that the punishment had already been paid on the cross by yes. Jesus. And so I just needed to set the gift of healing um, and his grace and his mercy. And so, you know, that's something that we have to walk through. We have to biblically begin to understand. And that's what brings um, the freedom because God doesn't punish us. Jesus pays that's the punishment for us. That's what brings the healing. And so I reached out to this pregnancy crisis center and, um, sat down with them, went through an interview, and um, long story short, became an interview. But she asked me this question during the interview. She asked, have you ever had an abortion? And that was the first time that I had ever felt safe in my life with a complete stranger, um, which blew my mind to sit across the table of someone I'd never met before, because everybody up until this point I had lied to because of the shame that I was living in. But here in this place, I felt safe. And I said to her, yes, I have. And she said, have you ever received God's healing in that? And I said, well, um, you know, I'm a little puzzled by that because I know that God's forgiven me. So I think I've received healing, but you know, I wasn't really sure. And, and I, and I, and she said to me, if you want to be a volunteer here, one of the requirements is that you go through this post abortive Bible study, would you be willing to do that? And so honestly, I left, you know, there a little frustrated thinking, you know, I don't need to go through a post abortive Bible study. And that is exactly what so many women think. And, um, then I went home and told you about it and you highly encouraged me to participate because we were in desperate need of it. And the truth is, is I really was in desperate need of that study. And so I agreed and I was um, circled by this amazing group of women that took me through this post-abortive Bible study that forever changed my life. And I received God's healing through that study. And um, after that, everything changed. I, I changed, right? Our marriage changed. I mean, it was a miracle in our life. And, you know, through that study, learning about anger and depression and forgiveness and how to give forgiveness and accept forgiveness. And um, there was a particular scripture that I uh, meditated on. It was Ezekiel 36, 25, 26. And that was what I would call my healing moment. And it says that God will sprinkle clean water on you and he will cleanse you of your filthiness. And then it goes on to say, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. And that's exactly what God did. And so. And when I saw that, and when that happened, during during that transformation of Jeannie during I mean it was literally over a weekend for me for me that when I saw it and when I saw that transformation like she said it was a miracle and at that point I was I had a newfound sold out to God and, and to Jesus to do whatever they ask us to do and because I had seen the miracle that he had done in my wife and he had done it over a weekend. So yeah. I was like, I committed myself yeah. and my life to doing whatever I can uh, or whatever Jesus called us to do. And so yeah. that's where we were. And it was an amazing, yeah. um, it was amazing time to, to see God work in her life that way. Mm -hmm. And then us, and, and then that brings us kind of to the point where you saw us on stage because we weren't expecting, mm -hmm. I mean, it was literally a week before the, the event, they called us and said, hey, you guys want to tell your story? And I'm like, yeah, Jeannie, go do that. That'll be great. Oh, yeah. He was really encouraging like, me to job. do it. good job. Yeah, he that'll was, be fun. He was encouraging me to do it, Holly. Oh, yeah. And then I said, well, they want you to come on stage too. And then it was a different like, wait story. A minute, wait a minute. I don't know about that. <laughs> you good. You can do it, but not me. And so, but then, but, but God was pushing us uh, to the next step or through the next gate that he wanted for us because yeah. he had shown us the power that he has in his healing and that we, he had us on a journey that, mm -hmm. that we just had to step in faith. So it was mm -hmm. pretty awesome. And that was the start of a, an amazing journey now that God has got us on to, to this point. 
that was that was terrifying too. I mean, they they someone else was supposed to speak and they didn't come, and then they asked us at the last minute, and we just knew we had to be obedient to God. But I believe that is the banquet that Bruce Wilkinson was yes. there speaking, mm -hmm. and I I remember eleven hundred people there. That's oh, crazy. it was oh my word! But um, God was there and He was with us, and I remember people just standing. Um, Bruce was one of the first ones to his feet, and I mean, I, it was just so much of God's grace was all through that event. And, you know, it was all about him and his glory. And so then we began serving. Uh, I did at Piedmont Women's Center as a volunteer counseling young girls. Um, I loved, loved what I did. And um, Carter began to get involved because he saw the difference it was making in my life. And he yeah. was just sold out, you know, when he seen what God had did in our marriage and in me. And so we began to get trained in abortion recovery um, with Jeannie Stoner and Judy Cooter. And um, that was such a blessing. And um, that ministry was just an amazing gift to our life. And it's special. It will always be special. And, you know, we were very content there. We built a house in Greenville. We weren't planning to go anywhere. But then God began to stir in our heart and uh, speak to us that he was sending us on a mission together. And um, it was to move to Horry County to start a pregnancy crisis center. And so we began to walk out those steps of obedience. And here we are, we moved here in 2000, the spring of 2012, opened the doors in 2013. What date was that, June? Yeah, it was July 27th, 2013. So we're coming, hey, July 27th. <gasps> oh my years. goodness! <laughs> I didn't even realize that. We just realized oh that. Yeah. Today, so is today is our eight, eight, year, eight year anniversary. anniversary. <laughs> oh my goodness, how about that? We just got we really could, excited. We could it never have planned that. <laughs> that, that is well, such a that is amazing, absolutely amazing. I, um, I don't believe in coincidence. Um, I call it uh, God incidents. Yeah. He's crying, Holly. Yeah, I, I told just you. realized what the date was. I didn't even, you know, you know, with the pandemic and everything, and the way the this year has gone so quickly by. So, wow, we're there. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Wow. New beginnings. Yes, eight, new beginnings. Eight represents new beginnings. Yes. <laughs> So, so tell us, um, tell us now about how you set up this pregnancy center um, and uh, how, how you're serving clients now. Okay, okay. So when we first um, began to work the ground in Horry County, it was just a lot of hard work of, um, you know, going, we, I went door to door a lot in just churches and talking to pastors and just sharing the heart and the vision for um, the pregnancy center here. We met with um, a lot of great organizations that were already here. Um, and we did that our whole year prior to coming just to make sure that the vision that we were seeing was exactly what the need was. We didn't want to duplicate anything. We wanted to just be a part of what was needed here. And um, in fact, it was. And so, and then we just started uh, having small events to build up our volunteer base. And then we had to wait for a building and when God provided that we opened the doors and we started serving um, and so you know from there it's just been to build the foundation and continue to outreach to the community and share the uh, the, the great services that we have for clients, mothers, and fathers in need, um, but also just to um, share the message of healing for those that have experienced abortion. We offer a post-abortive program here as well as all the other great services that we offer. And, you know, that's just ongoing outreach that we do, just like every other great pregnancy center in the state of South Carolina, doing amazing work. Um, what a blessing that they are. And so, so, so to answer your question, we started out Initially, when we first got to Myrtle Beach, it was 2012. We we started out with Jeannie actually uh, doing post-aborted um, counseling with with young women throughout our community, and we outreached to the community with you know gatherings to kind of educate them on what our plan and what our what we had saw that God wanted us to do. And so we finally got a location for to start the resource center. And so we started doing the pregnancy crisis resource center and we were supplying, you know, baby supplies and doing education and parenting with the, with the young mothers. And then um, three years later, God gave us the opportunity to convert to a medical clinic. And so then we were, we combined the, the resource center and the medical clinic into one location because that's all we had was one location. At the time, that's all we could afford. So we were we were alternating days between the medical clinic and the resource center, 
And then as things continued to grow and God just continued to bless this ministry, we were able to get a separate, uh, to another, another location. And, but we were still doing the same thing. We were combining resource and medical in the same buildings. And then we realized um, that we could do much more and much greater things by separating the services. So we kept uh, the resource center, which is now Abigail's place, that's here in Conway, and we started a uh, coastline medical clinic in Myrtle Beach. And now we're servicing and, and uh, taking care of the women who are abortion-minded and abortion-vulnerable in our community. So now we've got two, we got a two-focus um, idea that's going on right now, and it's been working great. And we've been seeing a lot of young women who are abortion-minded and abortion-vulnerable coming into our medical clinic for pregnancy tests and ultrasounds and we actually actually are being successful in saving babies' lives and changing generations and then uh, referring them back to Abigail's place in Conway so they can continue their parenting for the next three years. So it's been, we're seeing so much um, generational change right here in our community just from what God has blessed this community with, and that's Coastline Women's Center. And we're just happy to be a part of that and to, to play the, you know, the part that God has given us to to be in in this so and right before the pandemic we had opened up a satellite office in little river so mm -hmm. um we now we're beginning to pick up pick back up the pieces and really try to press into that and cover that area there's such a large area from um, little river north myrtle beach all the way into brunswick county just a big gap there of people that are hurting and need help and there's no services there so we're hoping to kind of uh, bridge some of that gap there and, and offer yeah. some services. And unfortunately, that is our freeway to the Planned Parenthood in Wilmington. So we yeah. would love to do anything we could to Feel hinder more. that from happening so that we can educate and save more lives. Yeah. And we're continuing, you know, we've had to be very careful as um, everyone else with the pandemic, but we've been able to, um, for the most part, stay open. We did close for about a week when it first um, yeah. hit, but we've, we reopened quickly and put things in place. And actually our medical service, we've had an increase in abortion-minded vulnerable clients in the medical clinic through the pandemic. Um, and so we've, we've had some some great saves, some great, um, you know, many salvations. And so God's at work. A lot of great things happening. And another great thing that happened was the healing of your infertility. Yes, yes. Tell us that story. Tell us that story. Because okay. I, re I remember the gender reveal that you did. <laughs> That was so awesome. Everybody was hoping, and wherever I was believing, I think that it was going to be a girl, just because uh, my baby in heaven is a little girl. And um, but we have a wonderful, sweet, amazing little boy named Luke. And um, right after we had gotten Coastline, um, the first location established, and I would say stable. Um, I had the whole year that year, God had been speaking to me from the book, book of Hebrews. Once you have done the will of the father, then you will receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. And I was hoping it was a child, but I had become very content and just serving the mothers and babies in our community. And I was at peace, you know, and I was just believing and hoping God would bless me. But if he didn't, I was okay with that too. And so right when we got stable, I found out that I was pregnant and it was a huge surprise. Mm -hmm. And, um, 10 years in the making, 10 years, we waited and prayed for 10 years, but I truly believe that it was a result of God's obedience, being obedient to God to start coastline and to walk that out faithfully that Luke was the reward of that. So he's yeah. five years old now mm -hmm. and he's, he's in five. a, yep. He's five. <laughs> he's five. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and he outsmarts us most days. <laughs> yeah. and he's going to be driving next week, you know. I know it's it's it's, it's very crazy. true. But you know we, you know I know we're getting close on time. But just to sum everything up, and um, we truly believe that God has called us together to be just instruments and catalysts that you know can be used to see the end of abortion. That's our true heart. Is That's that our ultimate mission? Yeah, that we can see abortion come to an end, and whatever part that we play in that, you know, we're we're thankful to be a part of it, and want to do whatever we can, you know, locally, statewide, nationwide, whatever it may be, um, you know, to see that happen. So let me um, let me kick this back to Sally now, so she can tell people um, how they can access 
this if they didn't see it live or if they want to see it again. Um, we post these on our Facebook page and there's a link that she'll give you. And um, Sally? Thank you. Carter and Jeannie, thank you. This is a great story. You know, this is the first time that I've heard your story and I'm sitting here with tears in my eyes. So thank you. It's really, it's really very beautiful and inspiring. Um, so for those of you that are going to be catching this um, recording, uh, you'll be able to find it on our Facebook page, of course, immediately. Uh, I'll have it posted to our Twitter, Instagram, YouTube channel, as well as it'll be posted on our website for archive purposes. So people can go back and watch this, this uh, recording as well as any others. So uh, Jeannie and Carter, if people have questions for you, they'd like to get in touch with you, what's the best way for people to contact you? They can contact us through Coastline Women's Center or um, my website, and we both have Facebook pages, yep. so mm -hmm. any, any of those are fine. Do you want a particular email, or you just want to... Well, if you could just read, uh, what, what is the website again? It is... Um, JeannieScottSmith.com or CoastlineWomenCenter.org. Yeah. Okay, so JeannieScottSmith.com or CoastlineWomenCenter.org. Perfect. I'll make sure that that information is on our Facebook page and in the, uh, uh, in the mail out in the uh, e-tree. So thank you again. And everyone catch us next week for our next Proudly Pro-Life webcast. And um, until next week, have a wonderful and safe week, everyone. Thank you again, Jeannie and Carter. God bless you both. Thank you, thank you so much. Our, this was just such a pleasure. Now, now